This is DJI's Mavic Air drone. It's probably the drone you're going to buy if you are looking for a small consumer drone, particularly under a thousand euro. I've been flying it for the last month and I think I figured out its strengths and weaknesses. So I'm going to look here at eight pluses and eight minuses to the DJI Mavic Air. The first plus is the footage itself. There's no way you're going to be disappointed with the video quality here, which goes from a basic 720p high definition up to 4K. The stabilization is generally very good and the footage stays smooth almost all of the time in normal conditions. It's a 12 megapixel camera that gives a 35 millimeter point of view, which I actually prefer to the wider angles of some drones because you get better detail. Like other DJI drones, you can control the camera's direction from the remote control, and you can also control the camera settings manually, although I always leave it on automatic and still get really good results. This really is probably the best thing about this or any other drone. It really is an awful lot of fun uh, to, to see professional or near professional grade quality from such a small flying gadget. The second plus to the Mavic Air is how nicely it folds up. Each arm tucks away really, really neatly, leaving you with a really compact shape that fits uh, easily into a small case or even into your pocket. For me, this is brilliant because I like to take small drones with me when I go abroad in particular or down the country to rural, less populated areas. And I know that I can fit this into my bag with the remote controller. It's not going to take up too much space. It only weighs 300 grams. And really, when you look at it in, in, in compared to some other drones, it's much more portable in that regard. And some of the smaller detail here is really nice. DJI have implemented uh, fold away knobs. You just twist the knobs off and twist them back on. Uh, small little details like that do make a difference. The third plus to the Mavic Air is its battery life, which is considerably longer than the DJI Spark, the junior sibling of this drone. You get about 17 minutes per charge, even if DJI says it's over 20 minutes, it's not really. For me, battery life is a critical factor, particularly in a small drone. I have the Spark, I've had it for a year, and its short battery life of about 12 or 13 minutes is probably the only real disadvantage that it has, um, even if you can get it for around 500 euro at the moment. Um, the advantage to a longer battery is really sometimes you don't spot the shot you want for a few minutes, by which time you have to start bringing it back to base because you're running low on battery power. Now, like the Spark, if you get the Fly More combo pack option uh, for the Mavic Air, it costs you about another 200 euro, you will get two extra batteries and a multiple charger to charge them all together from a wall socket. The fourth plus is that the Mavic Air comes with a remote control as standard. And I'm really glad that DJI did this, that it didn't repeat uh, what it did with the DJI Spark drone last year in offering a cheaper version with no remote control, which some people bought, because in that scenario, you were controlling the drone from your phone, which meant that the range that you had was really only limited to about 100 yards, which is kind of pathetic. There's no point really in having a drone, um, in my book anyway, unless you're gonna bring it to, to parties as, as a party trick or something. With a remote control, you can get around a kilometer of range uh, in direct line of sight, and that gives you much more flexibility in terms of what you want to shoot. Another advantage to the Mavic Air is that it has internal storage memory, eight gigabytes of it. In the few weeks that I had this drone to test, I actually ended up relying on this a couple of times. And it's because sometimes you just forget to bring a memory card with you or it might run out as you're filming. So it's brilliant to have that kind of internal storage memory as a backup option. A further, albeit minor, advantage to the Mavic Air is that it connects to a phone much easier than the DJI Spark did because it has a physical cable connection that slots right into your phone. So you're not depending on a wireless connection between your phone and the controller, which then sometimes uh, interferes with or gets a bit complicated when it comes to the remote connection between your, your controller and the actual drone itself. So you only have one wireless connection between the controller and the drone as opposed to two wireless connections going on. This makes things like firmware updates much easier as well. Another advantage is the Mavic Air has better obstacle avoidance than its predecessors. It builds on the uh, obstacle avoidance technology that DJI put into the Spark so that it now avoids a collision with objects uh, in front, 
behind it and below it. If it detects anything, it simply stops and hovers, and in some cases will even try to find a way or a route around this. I'm going to include as a final advantage, although pretty much all of the DJI drones have this, is the peace of mind you get because this drone is connected to so many satellites. The GPS on this basically means that if you lose a connection between your remote control and the drone itself, the satellite, the satellites will, will basically guide it home automatically. And that's because the drone knows exactly where it took off via GPS connections. It knows on a second by second basis where it is using the same uh, GPS technology, which also means that if it goes down somewhere and you, you're trying to pinpoint it, but you're a few hundred yards away, you can actually go into the app, check the uh, GPS coordinates, put it into Google Maps, and you'll actually find the drone that way. That has actually happened to me. I had to do that once before. So it's a very, very useful feature. What about the downsides to the Mavic Air? Well, it has a few. Here are eight downsides to the DJI Mavic Air. First of all, it doesn't connect at anything like the advertised four kilometers away. Time and again, when I was flying this drone, it just stopped communicating with my controller when it reached somewhere between around 700 meters and a kilometer on average, sometimes a little bit shorter, sometimes a little bit longer. I mean, I still got nice footage. I had no complaints about the quality of the video, but it's, it's a bit of a disappointment on what's advertised. And what happens when you lose the connection is that your phone screen just starts to go blank. Uh, it stalls for about 10 or 15 seconds and then the drone just starts coming back toward you. If you want better range than, than the kilometer or so that the, the Mavic Air will give you, you need to buy uh, a more expensive drone like the Mavic Pro, which uses a different technology. It's not a basic Wi-Fi technology. Um, it uses a better radio frequency. Uh, so that's the way you should you should go for that. The second disadvantage to the Mavic Air is like the Spark, you shouldn't really get the basic version. You need to get the Flymore combo version, which is a bit more expensive because with that you will get extra batteries and a multiple charger and you absolutely need the extra batteries. There is no point going somewhere scenic and running out of battery life at a, after 11, 12, 13, 15 minutes and then you've wasted your, your whole trip. You absolutely need a couple more batteries, so do get the Flymore version. The third disadvantage to the Mavic Air is something that surprised me. You can't charge it portably. This is something you can do with the DJI Spark and it has helped me out quite a bit, especially if I'm going to be on a road trip and I'm bringing a portable power bank with me. Um, with the Mavic Air, you have to plug it into a socket. I assume that's because the batteries are a bit bigger and maybe uh, it's not safe or something to use a portable um, power bank. Um, however, you can only charge the remote controller on the go with the Mavic Air, so that is a disappointment for me. A fourth disadvantage is that the Mavic Air is a little bit louder than I expected it to be, and it's a bit louder than some other drones it's competing with, including made by the same company, uh, the D uh, DJI. The Mavic Air is a bit louder than my Spark, and it's probably around the same as my Phantom 4 drone, which is much, much bigger. A fifth minus, and we're starting to get a bit nitpicky here, but it's not brilliant in the wind. It's not supposed to be brilliant in the wind. DJI says if there is strong wind, you shouldn't fly it. Um, however, other drones I've had, particularly the Phantom 4 and even the Spark, have performed pretty well in stiff breezes. The Mavic Air is okay, but only okay. I, I, I did find it started to wobble a little bit. On the same theme, I would say that the DJI Mavic Air is a little bit brittle. Um, I experienced a few problems with the camera on this drone in the few weeks that I have it. Now, maybe it's just the test model uh, I had, but the camera actually stopped fully working three weeks into the test. It started to just point down most of the time and wobbling when I tried to uh, bring it back up. There, there wasn't a collision or a crash, it just stopped working properly. So do remember that these are small gadgets that are can be quite that are delicate and they're being flung about in the outdoors so things can get dislodged quite easily lastly one thing you have to pay attention to with dji is the f constant firmware updates these are very very regular and they can take some time to in install 
I've been flying DJI drones for a couple of years now and sometimes you'll get a firmware update just as you're getting ready to fly the drone and sometimes the drone won't fly then until you, you put the new firmware update in and then you need to uh, go and find an internet connection and all of that kind of stuff. So that can be a bit of a pain. So what's the conclusion? Well, overall, I'd say if you're in the market for a small consumer drone, this is definitely worth getting. The footage is fantastic. It's great fun to use. Uh, it's portable enough to bring almost anywhere. I've brought uh, drones all over the place. I'm filming this in, in Italy as we speak. So uh, if you are in the market, then definitely you won't be disappointed with this overall. But just do bear in mind the small niggles that you will get with it.